Hi everybody, I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Forbes senior contributor, Adam Minsky. Adam, thanks for coming on again. Thanks for having me, Brittany. You're Always good to be here. Good, you're a student loan expert, and so there's a new announcement that I wanted you to break down for us. The Education Department recently announced it approved $42 billion in student loan forgiveness. Obviously, that's a huge amount of money. Where's it going? Yeah, so uh, the announcement sort of broke down um, where uh, those uh, loan forgiveness funds are being uh, sent to. Um, a good chunk of it is through uh, new uh, new flexibilities under the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, which is geared towards borrowers who devote their careers to nonprofit and government work. Under the limited PSLF waiver, uh, which actually ended last fall, um, the Department of Education relaxed a lot of the stringent rules surrounding what can count toward loan forgiveness uh, for the public service program. It requires 10 years of qualifying payments. And because of those relaxed flexibilities, a lot more people uh, were able to qualify and get credit towards loan forgiveness. Um, those applications that were submitted uh, through last fall are still being processed. And so it looks like they have continued to process some additional billions in student loan forgiveness under that initiative. Some other initiatives include borrower defense to repayment, which allows the administration to cancel the federal student loan debt for borrowers who were defrauded by their schools, usually through some sort of misrepresentation. Uh, so a good chunk of loan forgiveness has been awarded through what we call group discharges for borrowers who, was, who had attended a certain school or chain of schools like Corinthian schools and ITT Tech, both of which collapsed several years ago. And then another chunk of that 42 billion uh, was awarded to borrowers who are disabled. There is a federal loan program called the Total Permanent Disability Discharge Program that can wipe out the federal student loan debt for borrowers who are unable to maintain gainful employment as a result of a medical condition. And through a new information sharing initiative that the administration launched between the Social Security Administration and the Department of Ed, they were able to identify borrowers who are disabled and would automatically qualify for relief without having to submit an application. And so uh, a number of borrowers got relief that way as well. This impacts 615,000 borrowers at least. So it's a good chunk of people. But student loan relief, as we all know, continues to be an extremely political and partisan issue. What has the response been to the latest relief announcement? <laughs> Well, I mean, so a lot of Democrats have celebrated it, and perhaps unsurprisingly, a lot of Republicans have derided it. Uh, we live in very, uh, very partisan times these days. Um, actually, congressional Republicans are taking steps to try to reverse or nullify some of these initiatives. Just this week, uh, House Republicans will be marking up legislation under the Congressional Review Act, uh, which can nullify and reverse recently enacted federal regulations. They're going to try to reverse President Biden's uh, most recent extension of the student loan pause and also repeal President Biden's one-time debt cancellation plan, which would cancel $10,000 or $20,000 in federal student loan debt for millions of borrowers. That has been held up uh, in federal court as the Supreme Court considers uh, some legal challenges, but congressional Republicans are going to try to repeal that through the Congressional Review Act. Separately, House Republicans are also trying to engineer a repeal of some of these initiatives in negotiations with President Biden over the debt ceiling. So there's sort of multiple fronts here uh, where there's some, some, some partisan fighting for sure over these, these relief programs. Does it look like the Republicans' actions will have legs? Does it look like they can actually repeal President Biden's actions? So with regard to the Congressional Review Act, it requires only a simple majority in the House and the Senate to pass, which means it's not subject to a Senate filibuster. It very well could pass the House where the GOP has a slim majority. Democrats hold a slim majority in the Senate, but it would just take a couple of Democratic senators to defect uh, and to join all Republicans for it to pass the Senate. But even if it also passes the Senate, it would still have to be signed by President Biden to become law. And it's highly unlikely that President Biden would do that since these are his signature programs. He would be much more likely to veto it. Congress could override his veto, but that requires a two thirds majority, which is probably unlikely to happen. It would take a lot of Democrats to join Republicans to reach that two thirds threshold, uh, given the very slim majorities that both parties have in Congress right now. 
I do want to break down the legality of this most recent announcement. As we know, back in February, the Supreme Court heard oral arguments in two cases regarding President Biden's sweeping student loan forgiveness plan. So is this most recent announcement legal? Well, this most recent announcement covers a number of initiatives under a number of different programs. The only program that's currently before the Supreme Court uh, is the one-time debt cancellation plan, uh, which is that $10,000 or $20,000 in federal student loan relief. Uh, there is a separate uh, legal challenge over the president's uh, latest extension of the student loan pause. That's pending in a lower court. We won't know the outcome of that. A lot of these initiatives were enacted under the HEROES Act of 2000. 2003, which is a federal statute that basically says that the U.S. Department of Education can modify federal student loan programs or even waive certain requirements uh, during times of a national emergency like a pandemic. That specific question is before the Supreme Court, but only insofar as it pertains to the one-time debt cancellation plan, which again is separate from these initiatives. So we might not have a clear answer uh, from the Supreme Court uh, on these other programs. And in the two cases that President Biden was and his administration was sued for back in 2022, both groups argued that the administration overstepped their authority by enacting the relief. Could that happen here and could they be sued? Well, I think, you know, the 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 sort of massive nature of the one-time debt relief plan i think puts it in the crosshairs um uh for for a number of reasons just to kind of put it in perspective this announcement of 42 billion dollars in student loan forgiveness is significant but the congressional budget office has projected that by the separate one-time debt relief plan would cost 400 billion dollars so just the sheer uh, volume of debt forgiveness and debt cancellation um, is 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 incredibly different, and I think that's what makes it distinct. Could there be legal challenges with regard to these other initiatives? Possibly, um, but you know, so far, uh, the, most of the legal battles uh, are are specifically about the one-time debt relief plan and the latest extension of the student loan pause. And earlier in the conversation, you said that temporary flexibilities under the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program were the way that President Biden and his administration enacted this debt relief. Can you break that down a little further for us? So under the limited PSLF waiver, which ended last fall, uh, rather than having to follow the very specific rules laid out for public service loan forgiveness, where only certain types of loans and certain types of payment plans can be counted, they broadened the eligibility so that more types of federal student loans and more types of payment periods could count. Now that uh, ended uh, in October, but there's a new initiative that's just being rolled out called the IDR account adjustment which actually extends a lot of those flexibilities and even expands it further, allowing for even certain periods of deferment and forbearance to count, and also for other types of loans, such as Parent PLUS loans, to possibly benefit as well. Parent PLUS loans were still excluded under the waiver. That IDR account adjustment is just getting started. It's still available. It effectively extends a lot of these flexibilities. And so we are anticipating seeing even more loan forgiveness in the coming months and possibly into next year as the administration begins implementing that adjustment. So how can borrowers apply for this if they qualify? Well, it's a bit complicated. So borrowers who already have direct loans uh, and loans held by the government can potentially benefit from the IDR account adjustment automatically. However, those that also want PSLF credit towards public service loan forgiveness would have to complete a public service loan forgiveness employment certification form signed by their employer to certify that they've been working in qualifying employment. Borrowers who have non-direct federal loans, uh, such as commercially held FELP loans and Perkins loans, they would need to consolidate their loans through the federal direct consolidation program in order to benefit from the IDR account adjustment. And according to the Education Department, they would have to do that before the end of the year. Uh, they're expecting to implement this program starting this summer and continuing to 2024. But if you have to consolidate to benefit, you have to do it before the end of 2023. Adam, I'm really interested to get your take on where borrowers are at right now. Obviously, this news is good news if you're a borrower, if you qualify. But overall, I mean, is, are they kind of in a limbo period? I know that the payment ex pause extension was extended through June. It's almost June. We're supposed to get a Supreme Court opinion or um, verdict by June. It's almost June. Where are we? 
Yeah, I think a lot of borrowers are sort of stuck in a bit of a limbo status right now. I mean, most borrowers have not had to pay on their loans in over three years. The payment pause is set to end uh, sometime this summer. The latest information we have suggests that payments won't actually uh, practically start up again until closer to the fall, possibly in September or October. But still, a lot of borrowers are waiting for the Supreme Court decision, which is expected in June. We're waiting for more information on some of these initiatives uh, that Republicans are challenging in Congress. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the Department of Education is facing a, a cash crunch uh, where they have to implement all these initiatives and they don't have sufficient funding or staffing to be able to do it. So a lot of these initiatives are being delayed uh, uh, and 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 the, the processing of existing applications is taking a while. There's widespread concern that when 40 million borrowers simultaneously restart repayment all at the same time loan servicers are going to be overwhelmed and they won't have enough staff to be able to field customer calls so there definitely uh, uh, is a lot of anxiety out there i would say when it comes to student loans these days given the state of things of course and what would be your biggest piece of advice to kind of quell that anxiety or just maybe a reality check for borrowers well i definitely think that you know in some cases when you're anxious uh, you kind of want to avoid um, and you want to stick your head in the sand and just hope that everything works out. Uh, I would advise against that. A lot has happened in the last few years. There's been a lot of new programs. Some of them are time sensitive. Loan servicers have changed. So your account may be with a different company than it was. Your financial circumstances may have changed. So now really is a good time to take a look at your student loan debt, log into your studentaid.gov account, figure out where things are, uh, be ready for payments to resume, figure out if there's any new programs that you may qualify for, whether you should change repayment plans, whether you may benefit from some of these new initiatives, and if so, what you need to do uh, to apply for it. Now's the time to do it. You don't want to wait until the last minute or even worse, get to a place where you've missed the boat on something. Uh, so definitely now is a great time to assess your options. Adam Minsky, I appreciate you coming on and sharing the updates. Thanks for having me.